Good morning, my name is Chris Fenton and I'm the Melco uh, technical trainer and what we're going to go through today is some of the more common axis errors that you can get with the machine. Um, like to apologize for the delay, we had some technical difficulties but Nate and Scott got it figured out so we are ready to go. So and what we're going to be talking about today actually crosses over for red and whites, Bravos, XT, XTSs, EMTs, um, almost all of the equipment. So the ones that we're going to start with first are going to involve the X, Y, and Z. Um, so first, in regards to the embroidery machine, the X axis is the left and right movement of your garment. The Y axis is the front and back movement of your garment. The Z axis is actually the needle going up and down and the rotary hook spinning. So those are going to be three of the ones that we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to go ahead and first one we're going to start out with is a Y axis error. Um, that Y axis error can be a timeout, can be a Y axis timeout or a um, um, it's not a seek. What am I, <laughs> what am I forgetting? Um, tracking. Thank gosh, dang it. I can't believe I forgot that. Or a Y tracking error. So all of these are going to be involved with the front and back movement of the pantograph or the front and back movement of your garment. So if you're in the middle of sewing and let's say you're sewing a, um, a rather large heavy um, let's go with like a Carhartt or coveralls or something like that and in the middle you get a y-axis tracking error or a y-axis timeout both of those are in essence referring to the y-axis has either quit moving altogether um, or the y-axis couldn't move when it needed to or when it was instructed to so the first thing that you would want to check is we want to confirm is this a mechanical issue or is it an electrical issue so you can start checking this by engaging the emergency stop on the machine now when you engage the emergency stop you still have what's called logic voltage um, so that means that the machine is still communicating with the operating software but it has killed power to the major motors. So I have my emergency stop engaged. My status light on the user interface went to a solid red. So with the emergency stop engaged, the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to see if I can slide this Y axis forward and back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will grab the beam and I can slide my y-axis forward and back. Okay, so that tells me that I don't have a mechanical bind. Now, what if I do have a mechanical bind? I'm going to start looking at areas on the embroidery machine where that garment could have got caught in between two areas and caused a bind. Um, a lot of that can happen is in between the sewing arm and the X carriage, which is what your hoops are, hoop arms are attached to. Maybe the hood of that Carhartt got bound up in between those two areas and it is now restricting the movement. Um, if I'm sewing caps, I'm going to want to take my cap frame driver off and see if my bind goes away. Um, okay, so in, in our scenario, we do not have a mechanical bind. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to release my emergency stop. The status light on the user control panel goes solid green and now I'm going to check again. Can I move this y-axis forward and back by hand? So the y-axis is locked into position which shows that I'm getting power to the y-axis. Now if I disengage my e-stop and I can still slide this y-axis forward and back that's giving me an indication that I'm dealing with an ele electrical issue 
either motor has failed and or main PCB or something in that area. My next step would be to go ahead, power the machine down, close my operating software, reopen up my operating software, and bring my machine back up again. So kind of basically like doing a restart on your computer. Let's get everything back and see what happens. If I do my power up, and again, I power up immediately to a Y-axis timeout or a tracking, that's an indication that that motor did not power up. So I would come and do my manual check again. Oh, I can still slide. Okay, at that point, you're going to need to get a hold of Melco Technical Support. And you might have to get a service call to have a technician come out to replace um, motor board uh, individually, possibly both. Um, for more advanced, I guess you could say, um, advanced users in regards to like um, technical and mechanical abilities, um, you can go to our service website, which is www.melco-service.com, and you can go to the technical manual for your type of machine and you can do what's called a ohm test or a resistance test on that particular motor. It does require that you have a digital multimeter. Um, but again, this is probably going to be for more um, advanced uh, troubleshooting techniques. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, your best bet would be to go and get in contact with technical support and have them, uh, guys and gals, help you out. The next axis we're going to discuss is the x-axis. Again, that's the left and right movement of x. Um, left and right movement of the uh, pantograph or of your garment. Um, your troubleshooting technique for the x, again, is going to be darn near exactly what you did for the y. Um, you're going to want to engage the emergency stop and see if you can slide this left and right. Now, when you are doing this, please make sure that you move those axes very slowly. We don't want you in there going full throw left and right as fast as you can. Very small movements, very slowly. So if I engage my emergency stop and I am able to slide that X axis left and right, tells me that I'm not dealing with a mechanical bind. If I cannot, I'm going to start looking for areas on the machine that could have caused me to have that mechanical bind. I'm going to go ahead and release the emergency stop. When I release, if I cannot move the X by hand, that's telling me that my X is locked in and I have power to the motor. Um, so again, you're going to want to do the same process as we did with the Y. Power everything down, bring it, open your uh, operating software, turn your machine back on, and make sure that the X does get power again. If it does not, you're looking at, again, you'd want to get in contact with technical support. Um, the other and the third major axis on the machine is the Z axis. Now, the Z axis, you've got a little more to work with than you do the X and the Y because you're dealing with two components. You've got your needle going up and down to stitch. You've also got your rotary hook spinning. So I'm in the middle of sewing. Machine stops with the needle down and I've got a z-axis timeout or a tracking error. Again, I'm going to want to engage the emergency stop, but in order to check the z up inside the machine in the middle of the casting, Right above where you attach your garments to the hoop arms, there is a shaft that runs down the center of the embroidery machine. It's called the arm shaft. Now, if you're on an older red and white, that shaft is still there, but the casting, you have just an accessible hole that's not much larger than your hand to get up in there to try to spin this shaft. Um, starting with XT and all the way through what we've got now, um, 
this whole under part of the cavity is open and you got a very easy visual sight line of this shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shaft and I'm going to try to spin it. And as you can see, maybe my take up lever is going down, my needle bar is going down, my rotary hook is spinning. So that's telling me that I do not have a mechanical bind in my Z axis. Now what if though I go to grab that shaft and I can't spin it? What are some potential areas that you could have a lockup on there? The first area that I'm going to look at is down here into the rotary hook. Um, you're sewing a hoodie and the string from the hood gets sucked into your rotary hook area. Um, a sleeve, anything that could get sucked into this area can cause this to bind. Um, so the resolution for that would be to go ahead and remove the garment as best as you possibly can, get your needle plate off, and try to so during a sewing cycle, when the machine is sewing, the rotary hook spins counterclockwise. So what I'm going to try to do is spin this arm shaft or the shaft that's up inside of the machine clockwise, which is going to make my rotary hook spin clockwise. And hopefully I can unwind what has been sucked into the rotary hook. Or if I need to go deeper than that, I will remove the rotary hook retaining finger and that will allow the rotary hook, the inner basket of the rotary hook to spin independently of the outer hook and hopefully I can remove the um, uh, whatever has gotten stuck in the, in the rotary hook and I can get it cleaned out. Now, if my rotary hook area is clean, then I'm going to start looking at my needle bar. That is the portion of the machine that goes up and down that has the needle in it. Um, lack of lubrication can cause a needle bar to bind up in the needle case. Um, you might also get a piece of thread stuck up on the needle bar and it gets sucked up into the casting of the needle case. Um, if that's the case for that one, you're going to want to saturate that area of the needle bar with oil and then just get up here on this arm shaft and start rocking it. And eventually you might be able to work that uh, bind out of the needle bar. Now, if you're having problems grasping that arm shaft, a mouse pad works really well, that you just take a mouse pad, reach up in there and use it to get grip. Uh, yeah, also those, uh, uh, and the little uh, rubber can, can opening things that help you open the lids on those will also work very well to help you to get a grip on that arm shaft. So, and then after we've confirmed all of that, we're going to go back and we're going to release our emergency stop. And with the emergency stop released, I should not be able to spin this shaft because it's locked in under power. If I can spin that shaft, with the emergency stop disengaged, I'm going to turn the machine off. I'm going to close my OS. I'm going to reopen the OS. I'm going to power up the machine and I'm going to see if I've got power. Now, in a lot of these instances, um, can we go to the uh, operating software? Um, you are going to see the error come up over here on the left side in your machine list. Um, if you don't have power to an axis at power up, this area over here should tell you X, Y, Z, timeout, tracking, overcurrent, um, one of the associated errors. You can also come down here to the bottom and you can see 
where here I have got, you can see emergency stop button release, emergency stop engaged. This will also give you a error log. So you've got two different areas that you can look at in the operating software. This should hopefully point you in the direction that you need to go to be able to determine which axes you're getting the error from. And then what we have discussed today to troubleshoot. Now also what we have discussed today is if I go to the service website that I just gave you the um, link to, servo motor errors, move timeout, tracking, and overcurrent errors. So here is also kind of a step-by-step -step tree of what we just discussed on how to determine, am I dealing with a mechanical bind? Am I dealing with an electrical um, issue? Going back to the Z axis, it is possible that you get a needle break and part of that needle gets stuck down in the rotary hook. And that will lock up the inner and outer baskets of the hook and will give you a Z error. So if you have a needle break and then immediately following that needle break, you're getting a Z error of some nature, that should be the very first place that you want to go look um, is with the rotary hook and with the, the needle point in that area. So the last one I wanted to cover today um, has to do with the color change. Um, you could get what's called a color change seek error or a color change time out. Um, so our color change motors have what's called an encoder. So the encoder reads the position of the needle case, needle one, two, three, whichever you're sewing. If that encoder is starting to fail or has failed, you could get a color change seek error. And it's about exactly what um, the error indicates. The, the motor just does not know where to go any longer, or it can't get to where it needs to go, so it's seeking out a position, color change seek error. Um, a mechanical bind could be the cause of that. One thing that you're really going to want to keep an eye on is the position of these front black covers. If you had just done a maintenance and the maintenance required that you take off one or both of these front black covers to do a lubrication, part of that maintenance is making sure that those covers are in the correct up and down position when you put them back on. But you got click happy and you just click, click, click through and these covers did not get in the correct position. That can cause the needle case to bind when it's going left and right. That can give you a color change seek and or a color change time out error. So when you're doing those maintenances, please go very slowly and follow it step by step because the position of these covers is very critical to the functionality of the machine. Um, so in regards Today was pretty sh short, sweet, but we wanted you to be able to identify the X, Y, the Z, and also areas that you can look at on the machine to help you uh, be able to rectify the situation. Um, also, on our service website, I'm going to go back to that again. And if I go to the home page of the website, we have a very, very, very good FAQ section. Um, please utilize that section. It has a search. I can go here and I can type right in the search what I'm looking for. A lot of valuable information that is in there. On top of the FAQs, we've also got the technical manuals. Um, so if I go back to just the home page, 
and I go to, I'm just going to do the EMT 16 plus, and I'm going to come down to the technical manual. And they are a PDF, so if I do a control F, it's going to give me a search bar. In that search bar, I can type in a keyword. Um, earlier in the, uh, we talked about ohming out a motor. So I'm just going to type in OHM for ohm. And you can see up here in my search, I have one of 17 different areas to look. So Z motor assembly, here's the step-by-step -step instruction on how to ohm out the Z motor. If I hit the down arrow, it's telling me about the fuses that are in the power entry module. And if I hit the down arrow again, there's my X motor. Uh, one more time, here's a complete section for all three of the X, Y, and Z, which are classified as servo motors. So you can do a servo motor resistance test. Um, there are also stepper motors on the machine. Um, you've only got, depending on your model of machine, you've got three, four, or five. Um, we're going to concentrate just on the plus. You've got the color change motor, the grabber motor, and the thread feed motor. Again, we have a step-by-step -step instruction in the technical manual on how to check the resistance values of those motors. Um, again, those motors are most likely going to give you a timeout error. So. Um, the difficult thing with motors is, is it could be a motor, it could be a mainboard. And some instances you've got to replace both at the same time in order to make that determination. Um, but again, technical support, very, very good. Um, the guys and gals in there can get you going on the right path. And if need be, they will get you a service call. Um, set up to have a Melco certified technician come out and take a look at the machine. So that is all I have got for today. Um, we will keep up and I'll keep checking it and we will answer questions as they come in. So again, thank you for your time. Sorry for the delay. We had some little difficulties going on, but I hope everybody has a nice day.